this session really is about the future of healthcare, and having actually heard in detail what everyone said in the last session, um, it's very exciting. Um, we've got a terrific panel, um, and I'm going to introduce them individually. Um, this is about health informatics in meeting healthcare challenges, and of course, what healthcare informatics will do is it will transform healthcare, but it won't do away with the personal contacts. Medicine caring is an art as well as a science. And this is about helping people to do their job. It's not actually about completely substituting people. Um, it's a pleasure to start by introducing Dame Julie Moore, who's the chief executive of the University Hospitals in Birmingham. And I had the privilege of visiting her hospital recently and seeing the extraordinary informatics that they have in place. Um, and I won't steal any of her thunder by saying what I saw. Um, but I would note that one of the things that I learned was that because University Hospitals Birmingham looks after, um, sadly has to look after uh, military wounded, uh, Julie is also an honorary four-star general. So we better behave ourselves. Julie. Yes, <coughs> Thank you, Mark. The great thing about having done this session already today is Mark told every one of us we ran over. So we're going to try and be a bit more disciplined in this second um, session. So I am here, but first of all, I think it's useful to talk a little bit about the context in which I work. So I have a nice, shiny new hospital, and unlike London, it is always sunny in Birmingham. And we're fortunate the Queen came to open it two weeks ago, but we've actually been using it now for two years. But just to give you a size of, of the scale of it, we're quite a large hospital. We care for three quarters of a million patients a year because it's gone up now, and um, we're major centres for most of the specialties as well as providing urgent care for our local population. We do a lot of tertiary work, such as organ transplantation. As Mark said, we do host all, um, the Royal Centre for Defence Medicine and take back all military casualties. So the new building opened ahead of time on budget, and um, the thing I most want to concentrate on is our advanced IT and informatics capabilities, because this is how we manage our hospital, and this is how we believe we've driven up quality. So we would define quality as looking as having three aspects to it. The first one would be what actually happens to patients. And often when we all talk about quality, we, that's the hardest one to measure, what really happens to patients following what we've done to them in our care. The second one is the patient experience or satisfaction. How did the patient feel about the care? And the third one, as a public servant, I spend the taxpayer's money, and so it's very important to me that we're as efficient as we can be, that I make sure we're not wasting any money in what we do, and that we continually drive for value. And on those three things are, are the, I think, the triangle of quality. In the past, systems have concentrated on, on the money over other things. I think we're having a huge focus at the moment on patient satisfaction and experience, and we're not doing a lot about the, the first one, which is, the re, I think, the most important one. It's the quality of the care and the treatments we give. We develop bespoke IT systems and informatics to enable us to look at, really in detail at every individual patient and what we're doing. So the first system I just want to briefly mention um, is what we call our PIC system, Prescribing Information and Communication. Very briefly, because I could take hours on this alone, this has decision support at the very front line when the doctor is prescribing a drug for the patient. So it filters out errors. It stops the doctor um, if they're going to make an error. And actually, one of the things we've been doing recently is measuring junior doctors when they first arrive, when they're newly qualified, and when they leave. And most of them, the errors reduce significantly, but one or two, they don't reduce at all. And that's quite interesting experience then about how people learn. It contains all the patient observations and assessments. We know their blood pressures, we know everything else, but it also has the lab results. So we can tie up the lab results with prescribing to make sure that the monitoring is done where you need a blood level. And it enables us to order um, uh, referrals, other systems, physio, anything else coming through. So what, has, what effect has this had? And this graph shows you um, how it's improved prescribing behaviour. And this was done in the intensive care unit, looking at, in red, the amount that was prescribed per patient before and after we introduced the system. And we also measure sedation, so it's not the patients are getting under sedated, they're appropriately sedated, but the amount of drug, the total amount prescribed has gone down. And then we looked at drug errors. Now actually, internationally, by all the evidence, we were quite good beforehand, we were low on errors. But on this graph here, you can see that 
Some administration errors have come down, but significantly prescribing errors are a third of what they were, and monitoring errors, and that's things like having the blood level back before you prescribe a vancomycin or something, are almost non-existent now because the system prevents those mistakes being made. It's not a pharmacy system. It has no effect on dispensing errors. It's entirely different. And what it's enabled us to do is keep a grip on our drug budget. And so what this is saying, in, in ICU alone, it saved almost 10% of the drug budget, yet we were absolutely certain patients were getting appropriate drugs at the right time. And 27% um, of the savings in ICU came from sedation. It enables us then to enforce policies. So some drugs, they're, they're dangerous drugs, and we only let consultants prescribe them. And actually, before the system, it's really hard to instill that in every one of your doctors. But once it's instilled, that the system's in, you can see that you can enforce these policies very, very easily and stop other doctors um, prescribing things that we don't want them to. And we all know that you should only give antibiotics for, for um, a duration of, say, five days. So the red line is beforehand because you're relying on junior doctors to remember to stop a prescription. Whereas here, we build a rule into the system that stops them off at five days. And if they want them to continue, it has to be prescribed to continue. So it enables you to have the proper prescription policies really enforced in your organisation. And clinical incidents have gone down before and after. When we put it in, the, the far side graph is the one, the blue bar is after we've installed the system. And I know I, in previous slides I spent a lot of time looking at over-ordering of pathology, over, of lab tests, where we were running around above 30, 35 tests per patient. And that's because junior doctors tick every box in case the consultant asks for it and they don't want to be caught out. So what we did is get the consultant to say what test you want when. We put, um, a rule in the system and now you can see the tests run around about 20 per patient so we've saved a lot of money on laboratory tests but patients are getting the appropriate tests that the consultants deem necessary and that anxiety has gone out the junior doctors for I need to have every possible remote and obscure test in case somebody asks for it improves efficiency but all that um, is a lot of data and how do you manage the hospital on a day-to-day -day basis? So we've developed these dashboard systems which look at indicators of care and these are indicators of care that clinical staff have said are important. And one I'll focus on because I've talked about it a bit is medicines management here which is this dial. And each of those eight spots is a dial behind and if I go to those dials here, these are measures we've said are important in patient care and the one we concentrate on a lot is missed antibiotics. Now, no clinician at all, I don't think, would ever argue that a patient who has an active infection, who has a raised white cell count, shouldn't get their antibiotics on time. And yet culturally, I know as a nurse, it's quite acceptable if the drug's not on the ward, they'll put a little cross and say, out of stock. And actually, patients need to get that drug. So we've had a real focus on this in the trust, made it very, very easy for, patient, for nurses to access the drug, made it very, very easy for them to do the right thing. And therefore, we say then that if a patient doesn't get the drug, we count it as a serious incident. And once a month, the entire clinical team, that's doctors, nurses, managers, everybody involved, has to come and tell me, my entire exec team, why a patient didn't get their drugs. And that has been a very powerful way of making sure that people deliver the right care to the right patient. And people say, isn't this heavy-handed and big brother? But actually, the staff will say, no, we recognize the importance of this. And we've, we've seen that rate come down. But we manage the organization, because that's a lot of information. That was one ward. This is all the wards in my trust. On a funnel plot, above the line is poorer, be poorer behavior. Below the line is better. And um, if I hover on that on the live system, it'll tell me which ward. So above the line is more missed drugs and below the line is fewer missed drugs. Therefore, we can concentrate our attention on why is it that ward is a persistent outlier. But better for than that, for accountability and performance, each one of these spots is an individual nurse. So therefore, we can actually look and see which people aren't giving the correct drugs and which ones then need more re-education. And some of it is, is actually some of these nurses up here above the line you think are bad. What they're doing is tidying up after their predecessors. So you've got to be quite careful how you use this information. But what I would say is staff morale has gone up. Our recruitment is better than any other trust in our region. In fact, we have waiting lists for some posts. And it is very, very popular with the staff and award sisters. But it's, 
This is live information. This is live as of midnight last night. It's not, not like I'm going to somebody and saying, three years ago, we did, a, we did an audit, and three years ago, you were really bad on your ward, whereas yesterday, you didn't give that drug. Why? So the results of all this are, um, the colour scheme's not as good as I would have liked because we're doing this corporate thing, but the two to the right are only of the two trusts we can find with electronic systems in the country and that is the rate of non-antibiotics missed doses, and to the left, the bright red, is our trust. Now, that does include things like nutritional supplements, so you can see why people give, forgive that. But for this graph, the axis has reverted back. That axis actually says 0, 5, and 10. Again, it's the same thing, and our missed dose of antibiotics on this snapshot was around about 5%. It's now running at about 25 to 3%. And I don't think that naught is right, but I don't know how low we can get it. But actually, internationally, it's round about 10%. And, and so with ours being about 2.5% now, what impact has that had? You could quite easily say, well, you're spending a lot more on drugs and people are getting them, but what impact it's had? Well, this is the impact it's had. We measure emergency 30-day mortality because it's well-coded, and the top red line is England what's happened to mortality, and the blue line is what's happened in the trust. And because I've only got seven minutes to do this talk, I have got a graph to show you the correlation between patients getting the right drugs and mortality coming down, but I've only put this one on for the moment now. So we believe this is a very, very powerful way of measuring patient care at both an individual patient for managing your staff, but most importantly for managing and making sure that patients get the correct treatment that has been prescribed for them that will make them better. So. Thank you. Thank you.